All right, hi everybody. Good afternoon and welcome to Refresh. You know, today we're gonna to talk about life and curveballs. And I have to say that technology has been throwing us curveballs right and left. Uh, we are not the only ones, but I will tell you, it does build resilience. And I thought today might be a good day to share with everybody how Refresh came to be. For those of you who attended Generation W this past Friday, and I'm looking at some of the list, and Tara, you can see everyone who's on Facebook, um, based on what we're hearing and what, what we have been experiencing these past years, there's a definite post-event high. You feel it? The rush, the lift in your spirit, all these things. And I quoted my friend Christina Norman at the end of the show about, she always said, you know what, if there was a day every year that you, you know, get a little kick in the butt and you feel stronger and taller, well, that's a day we should spend. And so I love that people have been sending messages around feeling stronger and taller. And we are always consistently, um, we also hear about spirits being lifted, right? And the power of connection and community. And I can tell you that chat was roaring on the Paragon platform. And I love the observation that someone else shared with us, which was, I couldn't believe not only how much people were posting and they were supporting the speakers, but how they were supporting each other. And how quickly, right, Lisa, you saw it. People became new friends. Um, they were having really meaningful conversations. I heard about the women of web at web.com who had their own chat going. There were nearly 30 of them. And their messages were so inspiring. And they were so inspired. And, you know, all these feelings, these learnings, um, the connections, the power of W is something, you know, we want to sustain. Like, we don't want this to go away. Um, and for us, it stays for quite a while because we have this in euphoria, but we also have this exhaustion as well. But then we know, right, the lessons will remain and we'll draw on them. I still draw on so many lessons year after year, but we all know that real life continues to happen and it's like a layer, right? It piles on. And so we have a hurricane season if you happen to be in hurricane land. There's wildfires if you happen to be right now out west. I can't believe that the pandemic is now number three on our list, but we have this overriding pandemic. We have an election coming up and we also have homeschooling if you have kids. And so I wanna at this point thank Dr. Eager for those of you who saw her and if those of you haven't, it's something you must see, who reminded us that how we react and how we respond is a difference maker for us. And I was talking to Michael Ward about that just before this show. So a few months after Generation W last year, which was hashtag transformation, we decided that we needed to lift our spirits. That, you know, after a period of time, that euphoria, that lift, all of that that we now know how to feel. And that is such a great lesson for all of us that we wanted to bring it back, right? We wanted to separate from the everyday and remember that we can lift ourselves up and each other. Let's lean on the lessons, the great speakers, the great video, I'm, you know, all from Generation W and Refresh. And there you have it. So last October, we created an in-person gathering. It was personal, it was interactive, where we can revive and revitalize in the spirit of W. And then, and it was fantastic. You know, we all left, I mean, we laughed again, we laughed together, we cried together, we drank together, we did all these great things and so, here we are, the pandemic hits, and you know how that's been. It's been this constant flow, ebb and flow, right? And some days, I don't know, Lisa, how you feel, but I feel like I'm yelling into a waterfall. <laughs> and I don't know why, I just love that image. There's this beauty, but this futility in all of it. Um, but anyway, so Refresh became something that we can now do every week. And so here we are, Refresh, a time to connect, to be inspired, to learn something, and ultimately feel a bit better for this time spent together. That is what Generation W is all about. And now that we are so recently off Generation W, I wanna thank all of you who have attended, who are joining us this week. Those who haven't, we're gonna talk a little bit about how we can continue to disseminate the links and get everyone to participate. It truly was an extraordinary experience. And listen, all I wanna say is, who better today on this uh, first refresh after Gen W to be with us then? The very famous Lisa Shallot. She shakes her head, I'm not so famous. We refer to Lisa Shallot because one, she joins us every week, most every week, but because she's just involved in everything. And um, so Lisa will celebrate some great 10 moments. And then we're gonna tap into your deep well of knowledge and experience. For those of you who don't know Lisa Shallot, you probably should ask yourselves, why not? But now you can say how lucky I am because she is a former partner of Goldman Sachs. 
And during that time, believe it or not, she spent time living and trading in Japan as part of her responsibilities. So every now and then she shows up with these incredible Japanese facts that wow us. She advises startups. She sits on boards. She's the founder of a great new organization called Executive Women on Boards. And I am always impressed by the kind of programming she puts together for them. And we can now proudly say as well, she is the new chairman of the board for Gen W. How cool is that? She does know a thing or two about trying to gain control in a life filled with curveballs. So Lisa, here we are in this kind of upbeat moment as a post-Gen W experience, but as we can see by trying to get on the air today, life is still filled with curveballs every minute. Hi, Lisa. Hey, Donna, and uh, hello, Refresh audience. Hello, Gen W Refresh team. I am so thrilled to be part of this today. I have been getting through this pandemic from refresh to refresh, it really feels like. And so, uh, you know, yet another brilliant idea from Donna to help us get through. And congratulations again on such an incredible and inspiring and meaningful Generation W. Um, I am still thinking about it, reflecting on it. And uh, I, think, I think one of the things that really sticks with me so much is how much, how much I and we all really needed it. So, uh, so thank you so much. It was, it was phenomenal and I'm really glad to be here. Oh, we're so glad. So what we thought we would do everybody, because we're all here. I haven't seen Chris. Tara, you'll have to tell me if Chris is here. Chris Reese has become kind of one, uh, it's like, um, I don't want to call him our mascot, but he has become our rallying point. He, he's in the house. I see him on the chat there. Oh, you do? Okay, cool. Yeah. So, hey, Chris, you're there. Well, we thought we, we put together like three minutes of highlights. Um, I thought that would be a great way um, to kind of refresh and then we'll, we'll take it from there. So Stacy, by the way, everybody, Stacy is our guest producer. It's like having a guest DJ. Um, Stacy is the ultimate professional and um, Sherry has given her whatever guidance she needs. And I know Stacy just been a rocket. So whenever you're ready, Stace, roll the highlights. Guys, you understand this is not like a TV studio. It doesn't work like that on Zoom, but everybody understands Stace. Ha-ha-ha! Look at you. Don't end the meeting for all. I think the, the, the biggest thing that motivates me and keeps me going is the fact that besides, I... Besides me. <laughs> besides you, dear. <laughs> um, is that I, 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 I know that I stand on the shoulders of people who paved the way for me. And so I have to fortify my own shoulders so that those coming after me have strong shoulders to stand on. And so because I know the next generation counts on um, having some of, the, some of the thorns and the brushes moved away so that they can, you know, in, in the path cleared, because I know that they depend on that, I have to keep doing that. We can't all be on the front lines but we all need to get off of the sidelines. If you listen to people with diverse backgrounds, you're going to make better decisions. You're going to make good decisions and do the right thing. You're going to help children believe in what they can't see. And you're going to build a floor on the despair that too many live in and a roof over their dreams so that they can actually live out those dreams and be able to fulfill them. So even 20 plus years in, I have remained steadfast to my commitment to my personal and professional development. Now, it hasn't been without challenges. I've had to navigate hard situations. I've had to navigate challenging people. I've had to navigate corporate politics. But at the end of the day, I've found that if you're authentic, if you're genuine, if you stick to your core beliefs and your values, and you do good work, and you honor your commitments, you can succeed. So to me, voting with my time was really um, developing our people and the leadership I always said I'm planting trees of whose shade I will not sit under. Leaving a legacy through people and development of those people is, was most important to me and still most important to me today in the foundation. But you're right, having it all all the time is impossible. It's like a seesaw. It has to be more family at times and sometimes it can be more business but it's very difficult to do this right now. Uh, I'd love each of you to give us the one word, an action-oriented word that we are hoping that will come out of this moment as we look forward to the future of what people will actually be, will do and take in this moment. So I'll give you my example. I would say the word I would use is 
and I hope comes out of this is engage. I want people to engage uh, from this moment forward. So I'd ask each of you to give us one word in closing as we look forward. Just one word, one <laughs> word. That's why I gave you my word first, an action-oriented <laughs> one word as we wrap this up. Um, does anybody want to volunteer first or I'll just go back to our usual order? I'll volunteer because in that way I'll make sure I stick to one word. Uh, transcend. Transcend, I like it, thank you. Pat? Impact. Impact. I like it. Margo? Reimagine. Reimagine. Love it. And Winnie? Uh, this is two words, but, but be honest. Be honest. honest. <laughs> be honest. I love it. I love it. Well, there you have it. I don't know. I, um, I, I love, I, right, right? It's, it's, it's interesting. We probably can recut this so many different ways and bring out so many different themes, but the theme that I heard based on where Pamela and Jordan started, um, everyone's kind of looking at, at, at the future, right? Everyone's talking about whether it's shoulders or a roof and a, and a ceiling or Joyce talking about a tree with shade. What, what, what's, what stepped up for you, Lisa? You know, I think that this pandemic for me has really been about interconnectivity. And I think that that theme the humanity of it all, the things that we all share were really profound for me through um, Gen W. I feel that way in every Gen W, Donna. I mean, I, I feel such a sense of community and, and, and such a spirit of, of belongingness and, and, and connectedness that, that really fills my tank for an entire year. But this time, I think in light of what everyone has been through together, no matter where they come from, no matter what, kind of situation they're in. Um, as human beings, um, I think that we all have had this amazing shared experience and I really felt the power of that connectivity. And, you know, it, it, it really gave me a lot of strength. I think it, it, it turbo filled my tank. Wow, turbocharged, steroidal, it was steroidal. That's just so not a good word, is it? <laughs> so you know, Lisa, you watch none of these, uh, enough of these. So, so we're, uh, Becky Steen from California, is on. She says hello. She loves you, which is fantastic. Erin and Nikki, Nikki Glover, Chris Reese, Mary. Oh, Mary Lee Kingsley's on. Thank you so much. Irene just came on. People are coming from everywhere. Joy Kurtz just said, Jen with W last week was amazing. I have already watched it again and cried again. Well, if you knew you're going to cry again and you still wanted to watch it, I guess that's a pretty good thing, right? And she says she thinks Refresh provides me with a safe place to feel good or not and to embrace the day, whatever. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that as well. Ah, Chris Reese is here. What it do, he said. <laughs> uh, he said some of the most funny things on the chat. I, I really should pull them out at one point and share them with everybody because they were just amazing. Um, anyway, please. I don't know, I don't wanna leave this. That's the whole thing. That, I just don't, I just want to sit in it a little bit. We all just kind of want to sit in it a bit. Let me just say this and I'll do this at the end and then I'm going to come, I'm going to, I have my first question for you, um, which is we've gotten a lot, a lot of requests from a lot of people on wanting their links. So first of all, if you were an attendee and have a link, your link should work. However, we are putting a, a system together, which we'll know more about today that will make it available. And if, you know, Couple of people have called us and said, hey, you should really get this out here further. So if anybody has organizations, um, groups, companies where you think that they would like to participate in a Gen W experience, well, we're all open to talking about that. We think that would be a really great idea. All right, so Lise, let's talk about, uh, you know, the first curveball we had on Gen W was Thursday night, which was a major technical technology. Um, we had to get over that. So I know you spent a lot of time thinking about how do we regain or, re, or yeah, how do we gain control in a time where we have, well, you know, what's so interesting. Do we ever have control is the question. So even before this insanity, I would always think about things in terms of what can I control and what's out of my control. I would coach, you know, mentees on this. What can you control? What you can control, nail it. And then that leaves you time for the things that are going to come at you that are going to be out of your control. But never had I imagined, uh, and I think I can probably say this for everyone, 
that, that there would be so many things out of our control. And I think uh, it's a whole new level of out of control and the number of things within our control shorter and shorter. And, you know, I often reflect on the fact that, I, that the human brain just was not built to manage the variables of uncertainty that we're all dealing with. And, you know, there is even a hashtag on Twitter that is, you know, hashtag WTF 2020. Um, you know, Donna, you had started with a list of all the things that, uh, that could be on that list. And it, it is, even that is a form of, of sharing somehow. But, you know, every day there are curveballs and, and putting aside the big ones. Um, what, what really started to throw me was that every day there were small ones. And every day I'd kind of show up and lo and behold, there would be curveballs. And, and, and I didn't really notice the pattern somehow. It was just every day, more curveballs. And, you know, what's an example? An example is like, I have my next day kind of planned. I've left some slack in it because you never know. And someone will call me at 930 at night and all of a sudden derails my whole day the next day. And I have to spend the whole day finding papers for something I didn't even know that I needed and probably don't have. And like, that's just one small example. But what I learned from that was to change my mindset. I think really in the spirit of Dr. Eager. And yes, it, is, yes. it is expect the curveballs. Because if I come to every morning expecting that there are going to be curveballs, then I'm not as surprised. I'm not as stressed. I still have to pivot. I still have to, you know, dodge and I, I, I still have to catch them. But if they don't come, how awesome is that? And it, it completely changed around um, my, my mindset. And, you know, earlier, uh, Donna, you reminded me that I was a hurricane mom now as I have one <laughs> right. son in, in New Orleans. So now a whole new set of curveballs, literally week to week for the past three weeks has been another storm coming. And, you know, it really, it really does create a level, of, a level of stress that is on top of everything else we're all dealing with. So, so I just try to expect them. And kind of then my, my mindset is really, uh, is really shifted. So, you know, I try not to waste energy on the things that are out of my control. I, I try not to blame myself for the things that are out of my control. I expect things to be out of uh, my control. And per Dr. Eager, I choose the way I respond. Right. And it's not what happens, it's what we do with it. And, you know, those words are, are words I literally have written down and taped on my computer screen. Maybe we should make a t-shirt, a Dr. Eager's t-shirt combined with Gen W, right? It's not what happens, it's what I do with it. I'm wondering how everybody else felt about that when they heard it or how they hear it now. Let me ask you though, Lise, what are some of the biggest curveballs? Because I am sure, I don't even know if it's the size of curveballs curve that can throw us off. It can be the littlest thing, like my dog getting sick, right? It's going to be the the littlest thing versus, you know, Generation W crashing on a technology platform. Um, we're getting good practice at curveballs. Maybe yeah. that's, maybe that's a silver lining. I don't know. I, well, look, I think, I think again, it, it builds resilience, but, but it, it takes a toll, you know, it, 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 you, you get good at them, but having to do it every day, I think, you know, we have to acknowledge how much that, that wears on us. So, you know, what can we, what can we do to help, uh, to help take back control. You know, I think, I think that's really important. I mean, I have, I have kind of a, a methodology I've developed, which is, um, you know, to kind of pick one thing. And what is one thing, even a tiny thing, that today you can control? Or, or I look at it another way too. What's one thing that's just guaranteed to make you happy? So um, I know this is probably the case for you, Donna, but hanging out with the dogs, like, yes! <laughs> make you happy. like, I never see you not smile when, you know, when Lola's hanging out with you or when, or when Lola, whatever. Um, e even, even if Nola, even if no, even if Lola is like sick and has diarrhea all night, something about it still, you know, it's a curveball, but, but, but it, but it's still, it's still Lola. So I always find that the guarantee of a wagging tail um, always makes me happy and my dog delivers. You know, I somehow have become a gardener unexpectedly in this pandemic and it never fails to make me happy 
by going out to the garden, whether anything is actually growing, whether there has been, you know, some predator that's stolen that ripe tomato that I've been waiting for for months, it, there's always a sense of discovery um, in that. And inevitably, there's going to be something growing that makes me super happy. And so that takes five minutes to go outside and, and just, just peek into the garden. And, and I know that I'm going to get some sort of sense of, of happiness from that. And I can control the fact that I go outside and do that. So, you know, so those are some things. I try to take a, a two minute meditation. Two minutes, as we've all lost sense of time, can, can sometimes feel like hours, but, but like, how could you not take two minutes? Even if you've got one of those schedules where, where you're, you're trying to help your kids with their schoolwork and, and all of these things that are now part of our daily lives, like you can take two minutes. Maybe you have to combine it with when you go to the bathroom, but you have two minutes. <laughs> and just, just take it. And you can't, everybody's on their phones in the bathroom now, right? Everybody's like checking their emails. There's well, no time. <laughs> uh, 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 maybe that's you. But, but well, that's not, it's not me, but there, I've, I've observed people in my house, as you said. So, okay. so, so, so let, me, let me just add one other thing, because um, this is a, an interesting thing that I, that I just heard this morning. In fact, I just hadn't really thought about it, but... There's always one thing that you can do, which is to try to make another person smile. And that apparently just takes 10 seconds, I am told, per the research. And when you do that, it makes the mirror neurons kick in and then you get happier. And so I now am trying to find a way in a really quick, small way to just make someone smile. Sometimes that's just by smiling at a person. You, you catch them unexpected in the throes of all their curveballs, and they, they, they pause and they see you, they see you just smiling and it, it, it stops them in their tracks and, and they can't help but, but feel a moment of, of happiness. And sometimes we all need that kind of break and a pause. So making someone else smile, maybe it's just sending them an email or a text or whatever it is, takes a few seconds and it has a huge ROI. No, there's no doubt about that. No doubt about that. I, I can think about moments in my life, people I didn't even know that just said one thing that I still remember. And, I, and you know what? That, that does motivate me today. It is actually my thinking in a lot of the things as we shape them. But let me, we, as you know, people send in questions and I love oh, comments. Okay. The first one is, um, hold on, here we go. Uh, Lisa Moore Collins, so happy to be back for such an important conversation. Oh, by the way, Amy, uh, thanks, Lisa. We're so glad to have you. And uh, Amy Ruth said she'd buy that shirt. So we already got one purchaser, right? Um, and then, all right, so this is a good question. How do you not let the little things feel like big things? That is challenging. That is really challenging. It's about, it's about perspective, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean... I think, I think you just have to take a breath, you know, rather than just instantly react or, or, or jump to respond or, or, or let, let the emotions in. I think you just, as I said, you, you expect it. And so I find it comes and I'm like, okay, here it is. I was expecting you. And I take a breath and then I figure out, okay, how am I going to manage that? And, and, and part of that is I really try to structure my day to allow for the time for the curveballs. And, and look, I know, again, we can't, we can't control a lot of our days. And some of us have a little bit of control over our days. And some of us, again, are going or Zooming from morning till night, uh, handling all sorts of things for our families. But, you know, I, I, I try to think about my day and I try to create a few non-negotiable things. So one non-negotiable thing is, I always eat lunch from one to two, you know, I, and, and I found that I can pretty much control my schedule so that from one to two, I eat lunch. One, it makes sure that I eat lunch because it's very easy for us to get caught up in our routines and just not, not eat, not, not stand up, not get a breath of fresh air. So I really try to create those kinds of, you know, things that I won't trade off. And there are very few of those. Um, but one is, one is lunch. I try to take a breath of fresh air every day and I, and, and avoid zooming my entire day. Um, because that, that can, that can definitely happen. Um, so, you know, to me, part of it is thinking about time and, you know, 
I was I was really moved when uh, Donna at, at Chan W, you played one of my favorite songs. Um, I did not know, by the way. I did not know that. From Rent, um, you know, 525,600 minutes. Uh, and, you know, it's such a favorite song of mine that a good friend um, yeah. actually made this as a piece of artwork for me to have. Um, and it's the it's the lyrics to the song. I mean, I, I was I, it, it really it really was wonderful. Music can can stop you in your tracks. So that can be a good pick one thing. But, you know, this song really makes me think about how are we noticing time? Um, and and right now, amidst the the craziness, you know, it's really warped our sense of time. I'm sure many of you have had the same feeling I have where on a given day, you don't even know what day of the week it is. It's just a day. Or maybe you don't even know what month or what season it is. Or maybe you have a reflection back to something that you feel like was such a long time ago. And, and it was like two days ago. Um, and, you know, I think I think we're all we're all living with that impact on our on our perception. Sometimes time speeds up, sometimes time slows down. But what what I've come to realize is that there are there are two kinds of time. There's reactive time when you're responding to things, and then there's proactive time. And again, because so many things are out of our control, it doesn't mean necessarily that you can affect the ratio of those things, but Every so often, I'll just take a step back and assess, what is that ratio? How much of my time am I spending responding to things, reacting to things, versus how much of my time am I spending being proactive? And at least you know. And at least if you know that ratio, you can be kinder to yourself. Um, and so I do schedule unscheduled time, at least I try. You know, I'll schedule something because I know I follow rules. Um, so I will schedule, you know, whatever, uh, 10 to 11, um, or the lunch break I told you about. And it, it, it helps me kind of preserve um, my, my sanity. Um, and it really helps me think of time in a, in a directed way. It helps me try to deal with blurring boundaries everywhere and, um, you know, attempt to, a, attempt to give myself a chance to breathe. Which is great. But I love Lisa Moro, Lisa Moro Collins. I don't think she's alone. Refreshes my one thing. It's blocked on my calendar every week, which yep. we love. Sonia joined us. How great is that? Awesome. Uh, also a, a previous guest on, on Refresh, Marianne Jacoby's with us. Let me ask you this, Lisa. And we looked at the graphic. We can put it up. Stacey, you want to put that graphic up one more time, if you wouldn't mind? Um, because what you, it, 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 it's a summary of what you've been talking about, which one is expect curveballs, right? If we start the day expecting something, it's not like we're living in fear. It's just kind of something's going to happen. And that resilience piece, I guess, that you've been talking about, I can deal with it. I love the pick one thing. It reminds me of the menu at Panera's where you get to pick two things. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I make myself laugh. That's actually a good thing for me. Um, change your relationship with time, which is what you were just talking about. Yep. Right. And then slow down the velocity. Could you just talk a little bit more about that one? Cause I think that's really important. Well, I will say that, um, in my early days of my career, when I was on a trading floor, I had a few performance reviews where people commented that I would run on the trading floor, like not in a way to create a hazard, um, but, but just that I was always, always moving. I was always going fast. And, and I really experienced time as moving quickly. There was an urgency about everything. There's a special energy on a trading floor that just makes you feel uh, like, like things are, things are electric. And, so I've always been conditioned to, to go fast and maybe to a degree to be impatient. I've had to learn patience, but to go fast. So it was really much more recently um, in the context of two things. One, um, when, I, when I retired from my, from my crazy career, I had a chance to slow down. I didn't really, I didn't really know what to do with my time then that was that was a really freaky feeling but but more recently and and a little sadly um when uh my mom was ill and i spent time in assisted living with her you know 
everything just moved at a different pace. There was a slowness to everything. And I found that rather than be impatient, um, I just came to respect the slow. And sometimes the slow would be, you know, just, just holding the elevator door for some, some elderly person who was coming from all the way down the hall, who sure could get the next elevator. It wasn't such a big deal, but, but somehow there was, there was something that I felt was special about, about just holding the door, giving that person their time and space to make it to the elevator. And, um, and that, just, that just made me, made me feel good. It made me appreciate the slow. It, during that time, when I was waiting for the person to get to the elevator, I felt more present. I felt more grounded. And so it's just made me think about how do we, how do we embrace the slow? Um, because often we're trying to go too fast. And, and, and I think that again, a lesson in, in these times is that we don't know, we don't know. And it's okay, it's okay for things to be slow. We shouldn't force them. Sometimes we have to roll with them. And I think by virtue of having those small, slow moments, it, it makes things much more consequential. So, you know, I have so many reactions, as do many people. I, I want to hold up my phone and say, it's hard to live in the slow when we are being programmed. Now, Dr. Edie would like that because it means we're giving ourselves over to this, which by the way is probably her point. Um, there's a great new doc out that my son, which I love the fact that he goes, mom, we have to watch this doc together about technology um, and what it's doing to our brains, our minds, and our life. So in your spirit of saying, okay, I can control this. We got to put these down a little bit more. I, yes, that, unfortunately, those are built to make sure that you don't do that. Exactly. Um, exactly. It's, it's, it's a dopa hit every single second and, and it's intentional. Oh, that could be part of that, that. By the way, that's the theme of Gen W next year. Intentional, the intentional things that are being done. It's scary. Um, Sue Renner says hello, by the way. And so, um, yeah, Sue Renner says hello from the West Coast. We're always worried about our West Coast kids. Um, Susan said, you know, we talked about control a few weeks ago. And I said to her, did we ever have control? <laughs> Which is how I opened it up with you. Yes. Or was it that our habits that we miss? Hmm. I'm establishing new habits and finding comfort and sanity in the new habits. I, I like Dr. Eager's view of the world. And I think she would answer your question as, yes, we do have control. We control how we feel. We control how we react. We control our attitude about things. And um, I think that's a, that's a really important outlook on, on life. Um, so yeah, I think, I think from that perspective, Donna, we, we, we do and we did and we will have control. Aha, uh -huh. okay, all right. I will say, um, I have a question from Chris, but before we do that, I saw Barry Kleinman came on. And uh, when somebody was asking me, how do you make sure little things don't seem big? He once asked me a question that I think about every day and I will share with everybody. He goes, 20, 20 years from now, actually we can say one week from now, when you look back at this, what does that mean? Like, so taking something and putting it in the context of time is so helpful because you're going to say, you know what, a day from now, a week from now, this isn't that important. Um, or it is important and I can deal with it. And I just thought that was a great way to help keep things kind of in perspective. Yeah, I look, I, I, I agree with that. But, and I, and I find that to be a, a very helpful way of, of looking at things, I guess. You know, we've all been taught don't sweat the small stuff, right? Like that, there's a whole, whole long conversation about don't sweat the small stuff. Um, yet, I think the small stuff often is the most meaningful. So don't sweat the small stuff that stresses you. Um, put it into context as to, okay, does this, does this really matter? Um, I often will stop and ask myself, what's making me feel stressed about this? Why do I feel this way? And, and usually pausing is good. Asking that question will reveal actually something completely different that ultimately I can rule as unimportant. 
Um, and, and, and I find that very helpful, but at the same time, you know, they're trying to counterbalance and remember, you know, I, I think, I think we all talk about, um, thinking about what we're grateful for or, um, the small things like the fact, Donna, you just said that, and I could tell that it, it filled your heart that your son asked you to watch a documentary with him. Absolutely. Right. And, and it's, it's just little kind acts, little thoughtful acts that, that really help to counterbalance a lot of the, the curveballs that are, that are stressful, I think. I, I, um, yes, I definitely and, agree. And, and, and one, one thing that I want to say is that, you know, we also have to expect that other people are having curveballs. <laughs> you know, we get, oh. we get very caught up in our own. Um, and the fact is everyone's having them. So, you know, let me, let me give you an example. Um, Please. I, I had scheduled a Zoom meeting with someone whom I didn't know really well. It took so many emails to schedule this Zoom meeting. And we finally have it uh, set up and um, the person doesn't show up. I'm, I'm in, in the Zoom alone. Now, initially I was a little angry because, you know, I, I, I kind of expected that we would, we would both show up. And then given the world that we're in, I kind of got worried. And it made me think, even though I don't know this person, well, I, I, hope, I hope they're okay. Um, and I kind of sat in the box and waited and waited. And during that time, you know, use the time to grab my, grab my proactive moments. I would, I, you know, took some breaths. I, I, I purposely did not pick up my phone. Anyway, long story short, I later discovered that the reason that this person did not show up was because she got a call saying that her daughter had fallen off a horse. Right. And she had to take her daughter to the hospital. Now, I, there were so many reasons why she might not have shown up on that Zoom, but it reminded me that everyone is just going through so much. Everybody has curveballs. That was a big one for her. Thankfully, her daughter is okay. But we have to give people room for their, for their curveballs. And, you know, sometimes a, a curveball can be humorous. I was on, again, sorry, my life is, is Zooming, uh, all of these Zoom examples like everyone else, but I was on a call with a woman, um, uh, you know, having a, having a meeting, and all of a sudden, I see her face, like, have a, a crazy look come across it, like, like, like a <laughs> panicky look. Right. And, I, and I said, wait a second, what, what's the matter? And she leans in and she says, did you see that? And I'm like, no, I, I don't know what you're talking about. All I saw was your face completely changed. Are you okay? She goes, I'm so glad you didn't see that because I'm, I'm zooming from my bedroom and my husband, unbeknownst to me, was in the bathroom, took a shower, somehow didn't have a towel, came out of the bathroom completely naked <laughs> to get a towel. And I'm on the Zoom and I suddenly was faced with the possibility that you were seeing in the background, my husband naked. <laughs> and I told her, okay, well, yeah. you know, if, if that were the case, I think you probably would have seen that register on my face. But, you know, it was, it was a slightly more humorous um, example. But, you know, everybody has curveballs. And so we have to deal with our own. We have to expect them. We have to give people the space to also have their own curveballs. And I think in doing so, you know, this is all about how we're, how we're just interconnected and how we're compassionate and kind to ourselves and others. Wow, what a story. I, you know, that could be a funny thing too. I, I, as you're talking, there's so many collections, I think, I'm thinking of, this would be like funny Zoom moments, right? You know that show on television that's been going on for 27 years where people put in their crazy video clips? Now we're going to have crazy Zoom clips. Although, honestly, whatever. All right, Chris asked a really good question. Um, and thanks for your question, Chris, as always. What do we do after a curveball comes? Another curveball and another curveball. And after a little while, you find out that you don't really have any stamina left. Um, but you still have to instantly pick yourself and go back on. So it, I guess he's asking us about building, building like these wells of resilience. And we don't necessarily have that 
from the outset. Yeah, look, I think, I think unfortunately that's become the new normal. That, that's why for me what's worked is to expect them. And maybe it's to expect a lot of them. But I also listen to my body. I try to um, take, take some signals and, and, and cues. So you know what, if I'm feeling exhausted, I give myself permission to feel exhausted. And I, I might lie down. I might, what I usually do, Donna, you know this, is uh, I live in Westchester, New York, very close to the SUNY Purchase campus. It is flat. There is a loop. And um, if, if, I, if it really gets to me, like, like uh, you know, Chris is describing, I will just go take a walk. I will take a walk around that loop. I will not listen to anything. I will just look at, you know, the, the shapes of things around me. I will feel my, my feet on the, on the ground walking. Um, I will listen for what sounds are close and what sounds are far. And it's amazing that really clears my head. Um, but, you know, that can take an hour and I don't always have an hour. But I always try to identify, uh, like I was saying at the beginning, a few things that are my go-to things for when I really feel depleted, um, for when I feel like I don't have the stamina anymore. What, what can I do? And I try to have a few good go-to things that I go to. Sometimes I'll pick up the phone and call you, Donna. Um, yeah. Or sometimes, sometimes it's a text. And sometimes a text from you to me at a time when you don't even realize how much I need it is all I need. And that gives me, you know, a, a ton of energy. And I think, I think we shouldn't underestimate how we can be helpful to each other by doing those proactive small things, because it's like, it's like you're, you're delivering an, an energy burst. And so, you know, that, uh, I, I, I don't have your, your, your cell phone, Chris, but, uh, you know, sometimes it's funny, like sending an emoji is a really efficient way of, you know, just, just reminding someone that they matter and, and making them laugh it's, if it's a really silly one. Um, but but it, just, it just gives you that pause, that break to say, okay, you know, and somehow doing that gives you the strength to just find more stamina. Right, right. And which we all need, right? And, okay, and Donna, how do, how do you do that? What's your answer to that question? Oh, wait a second. Um, I thought the ground rules that you signed before this, you know, the big stack agreement. You're, you're out so of you control. Ask me, you could ask me, oh, what? You're, you're, uh, you've lost control. I you, just took control. You can't ask me questions. Of course okay. you can ask me questions. So what do I do when I just feel like there's, and I, and I, by the way, I have felt that lately and it's the little things, right? It's, 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 it's little things that just stack up and they're not, they're not monumental, but you're like, okay, I can't do one more thing. One more, right. And I basically say that out loud. No one's listening. The dogs do, which is why I appreciate them, but they can't say anything back. I can't do one more thing right now. And so I just set the boundaries. I think you've talked about boundaries. I set a limit for myself that says, okay, let me contain what I have. Let me address it. Let me move off the things I can, understand the things that I can't. And then when I am ready, right? So while I'm doing that, right, I'm building resilience. My body's filling back up. And then I'm like, okay, and then I'm ready to go out again. But there are times when you just say, okay, it's enough. I would say like this after Gen W, it was now overwhelmingly, but overwhelmingly positive. Like, and it's always it, with all this goodness, I did what you did. I put on my shoes and I went out for a walk just by myself, wandered aimlessly in the neighborhood. I mean, someone could have picked me up, thought I was lost, uh, but it was just that kind of time alone um, to kind of just gather. And that's a good thing. I don't, I don't think we, no, I, I, no phone, no listening to anything. Right? Just, I love to hear the wind blow, maybe the rain coming, because it's been coming every day here all the time, but okay, that's, that's what I do. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, it's funny, I'm reflecting on what I do when I feel that way, because of course I feel that way. I, I have a fleece that I love, um, that, that somehow I, I go, like, change my clothes, put it on. I have a favorite shirt. Like, if I know I'm going to have a really stressful day, um, like there's, there's a particular t-shirt that I, that I have that's just like, it 
it's so soft, it's perfect. And, and I, I just wear it and, and somehow like it, it, it makes me, you know, feel like, feel like Superman a little bit. Like yeah, you have to find these things. You have to think about them before you need them. And then wow. when you, when you find yourself and being self-aware, calling it out, Don, I think is so, is so smart. Calling it out and saying, I feel like this. I, I don't think I can do another minute of this. This is too much. Saying it matters. It helps. It just, it's just a great, it's a great trigger to kind of shake you out of it a little bit. And then going to one of those go-to things that you know is going to make you feel better. So I might, you know, stand up and go in my room and, you know, change into that t-shirt. I always make sure it's clean. Um, I, you know, I, I have that fleece. Maybe, maybe I just need to put on that fleece. Maybe I need to walk outside, whatever it is. But by knowing though that you have that reservoir of things, it avoids compounding the stress and the stamina by then having to be creative on top of that to think, okay, what can I do? Or sometimes it's just saying, you know, I can do this for five more minutes. And right. then five minutes later, okay, you know what? I can do this for five more minutes. You know, some of us like train that way, you, you know, like when, you, oh, I, totally. when it's you're getting to, when you're getting to like the point of exhaustion, like, you know what? I can do this for another minute and you'll eventually reach a point where, where you can't, but that gets you a little bit, a little bit yes. more grounded. I always believe that incremental steps create exponential change. It's one little increment at a time. And um, I actually built businesses that way because if you looked at the whole thing, it's just all overwhelming. So it was, we can do this incrementally based on a, on a full plan. Um, by the way, I love the fact that Jackie, Dr. Jackie Thielen, um, she says she likes the funny Zoom clips as, as long as they don't involve her. And I'm just trying to think now, Jackie, whether we have one of you, but we won't do that. We won't, we won't do that. Can I Congrats. share a funny story? Jackie, Jackie is a mother of the groom this past oh. two weeks ago, which we we're very happy. And I, and I didn't hear about any of her stress. Um, there's, some, uh, there's two questions here. Kelly Watson, all the stresses we're experiencing, our young adult children are also experiencing. Without helicoptering them, how do we help them cope? You know, I think we talk about this. We all talk about this a lot, by the way. I think they should be watching refreshes. By the way, and Quinn, who I think could be one of our kids, also has a question. So, Quinn, we're going to come back to you right after this because I think it all ties in in terms of seeking guidance. I I think we need to just make sure we talk about these things, um, and so you know, acknowledge. Uh, I, I think there's some exercise that uh, for a while we were doing at dinner time, and wow, what a blessing to be able to, as a family, have have dinner together. Um, you know, that's something that that post empty nesting I, I hadn't done in a while, and is a silver lining of this pandemic that I always remind myself of uh, how grateful I am for. But um, it's kind of uh, I forget the name of the exercise, but you you kind of go around the table and you say like one thing that's stressing you out, and I don't know, is it like a banana? Like it's, it's, a, it's a reference of, of, I can't remember the name, but you, you talk about one thing that's, that's stressing you out and then one thing that went really well. Um, and so, you know, I think by sharing that and, and, and making it um, acceptable and normal and expected to, to talk about those things, I think reminds everyone that everyone's experiencing those things. Um, I do. Can I, I'm going to just tell you a, a quick funny story and then I'm going to, I'll just jump on this too, Kel. But um, when my kids were young, they were like five or six, we're sitting at the table having dinner. And I said, okay, kid, let's go around the table and everyone gets to say one thing about whatever you want to say. At which point my son, Jacob, stood up and ran around the table. And I looked at him, I'm like, Jacob, he says, well, mom, you said we need to go around the table. Ta-da! <laughs> I will never forget. He literally got up and ran around the table because he thought that was the instruction. Anyway, moving right along. Well, but, but one other um, thing that I've seen helpful, and I think it, it relates to the workplace too, where, you know, part of it is, are our, our, our kids willing to talk to us about this stuff? Um, and, and part of it is, are our colleagues willing to talk about this stuff? And I think Sometimes if you ask the open-ended question, it's really hard to answer and people may not want to admit to feeling stressed or feeling tired or whatever those things are. But um, I also saw an example where there's a list of the 10 things that uh, from a mental health perspective are stressing us out the most as a, as a world right now. And it's much easier to hold up the list of the 10 things and say, okay, 
where would you rank which one of which one or two of these things are high on your list today which changes the conversation from having to admit or having to bring up or having to even think of whatever that thing is and how to articulate and instead it's like oh okay on this list of 10 things that it could be for any of us which one is it for you today and why and and i i find that you know incredibly helpful and also something that at work one can do with one's uh colleagues without a doubt without a doubt i, I we we right we're we're here a lot so we tend to t we tend to try to talk about what's going on and i think quinn raises probably one of the questions kelly that maybe are of concern although your your kids are still both in college but um, Quinn's in the marketplace and, and she says there's many positives of, of remote work. I have concerns about navigating career opportunities and setting myself up for promotions without office interaction. Do you have any advice for maintaining visibility while working from home? I think that's a really great question and one that I am seeing more and more of and experiencing in my own, um, my own group's work as well. I mean, we're small, so it's easy, but thoughts on that, Lisa? Yeah, I mean that 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 could be a topic of a of, of a refresh in and of itself. You may have you may have done one um, related to that, but but I guess my quick advice would be that just as we've been discussing the fact that each of us has a lot. <laughs> there we go. Um, I see the dog. Uh, a lot of things that are that are out of our control. It that's the case in the workplace too, and so. I think it's a really good way to achieve visibility, but also position yourself to add value by reaching out and setting up even a five minute check in um, with, you know, different people you work with one on one and say, hey, what are your pain points right now? Or what's one thing I could do that would be helpful to you um, that I can fit into my day or what kinds of things are you most interested in now? And then that kind of tunes your antenna to know that when you see that thing or something about that thing, you can be helpful. And um, I think it's proactively reaching out and asking that and uh, then, you know, putting yourself in a position to create more touch points and create more visibility for yourself in a context of adding value. And um, I, I, for example, like if, 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 I were the one on the receiving end of someone asking that question, I would be grateful. I would love that someone were being so thoughtful as to ask that question. And then that gives us a chance to talk again. That makes me remember you. That, that gives us another touch point when you deliver something on the back of whatever I've just told you. And um, I think that that would be my short answer to that question. And I'd say, experiment with it a little bit. Don't, don't sign up one-on-ones for your entire team. Pick. Pick one or two people and see how that works. Um, yeah, I think that's good. The other thing I want to remind all of us is this will not be lasting forever. <laughs> there is an end date. We don't know what it is out of our control, right, Lisa? We have to think, but this, this, we will work through this. And it's also, there's also a need for patience. It's understanding all the other curveballs. So as, many, as much as I hear from young people who are saying, what can I do here? I'm also hearing from peers who are managing companies like who have so many curveballs they're managing from so many other angles. So there is this ecosystem of everyone trying to understand yeah. where the other one is, but trying to really truly manage their own. Um, Jackie says, sometimes I don't want to burden others with my stress, even wedding planning. Oh, she's responding to me. <laughs> I eventually come out of my cocoon. I encourage women to accept their own process and it doesn't have to be the same as others. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I hope, did you think I was being critical, Jackie? I was not. I'm celebrating you and your beautiful family. You know, I, I, I've tried to adopt the mindset of how can this be a gift? And um, sometimes it's hard to answer it that way, but I find if I at least start thinking that way, it forces me to be creative rather than stressed. Right. So how can this curveball be a gift? There's always something to learn. There's always a new perspective. There's always a new place it brings you to. Right. Um, and maybe if the answer is only, okay, it makes me that much stronger for the next curveball, um, then you know, that's, still, that's still a gift. It's a gift, and maybe that's what we should have called this, and that's the great way for us to end, as our time is up, Lisa, is the gift of the curveball. Yet another t-shirt. We've created so much today, right? Yes, I want to say perfect. thank you so much. 
And uh, as I do, I always take a little bit of notes and um, I will look back on many of the things you said, um, you know, ex about the expectations of a curveball. I love this idea of picking one thing that's really good. I picked my watermelons the other day. Oh my God, it was, it was exhilarating. And um, you shared the photo with me and I loved it. And that was my thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, proactive, right? The small things are difference makers. We should all think about that. And I love the way this community from Lisa, the fact Irene shows up and Kelly and Joy, and I don't want to miss anyone's name here, but everyone starts to interact with each other. Mary just joined us and Mary Lee, and she's like, it's it, that there is beauty in that. And we want to continue to make that happen. I do want to take a moment at this time so, to thank you, Lisa, with all my heart. What a wonderful time with you as always. I wanted to take a moment to wish um, all of those who will be celebrating the new year, the Jewish new year, 5781, a happy and healthy new year, and a healthy new year for all of us. Isn't it great? We should all celebrate the new year because we can say 2020 is no longer with us. I mean, I know Perfect. that it is, but you know, let's all just jump into 5781. Why not? Next week, we've waited a long time to be able to spend time with Miriam Benekarum. For those of you who have been to Gen W, you will recognize Miriam. She opened our Gen W festivities, was it two years ago, I think? She has, um, she's, she's just an amazing person. She's very, very funny, which I also appreciate very much from her, especially at this time. She has this thing about uh, chapters and choices. And in addition to that, she's this chief marketing officer for Nextdoor. Uh, many of you may be members of that already, but she's learned a lot about community and what's going on in this time of COVID. I always love to thank our team at this point in time. So Stacy, hey, listen, I'm not gonna tell Sherry you're replacing her, but you did a heck of a great job. So thank you to Stacy, Jamie, Kasha, Christina, Tara, Mariah, and Ruth, to all of you for joining us. Um, keep spreading the world at word that there is a place to refresh in the world and we love that our audience keeps growing. We just, we do, we just love you. Um, so many Thank people, you, as I said earlier, about sending questions and getting um, links to Gen W. We're working on that and we'll get it out. But if anyone has any ideas or they need a link or they want organizations who want to share in Gen W, obviously we all are all ears. So until next week when we're with Miriam, Lisa will still be with us because yes after all. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, Happy New Year and everyone be well, have a good weekend and remember we can do this.